In this tutorial, I'm going to be looking at the concepts of encapsulation and data hiding when it comes to object-oriented programming. These two terms are quite often used interchangeably. Um, there are actually differences between them, some differences more significant than others. Some, most of the differences are actually quite subtle. Uh, I'm not going to focus too much on the differences here simply because the concepts, the overall concept of encapsulation and data hiding, they kind of go together most of the time and they're certainly going to work together in the simpler versions of object-oriented programming that I'm going to be focusing on. So the idea of encapsulation, kind of in a nutshell, is that objects are self-sufficient. So in our case we've been creating the fraction class so that we can have fraction objects. And you want those to be self-sufficient in the sense that anything that has to do with a fraction should exist within the fraction class itself. So the things that you want to be able to do. So in my case I've, I've got a numerator and denominator. I have a method to determine size. I have a method to compare the current fraction object to another fraction object. Those are all things that are specifically written to deal with fractions. So it makes sense that they live within the fraction class. And as I add to them or as I change them, any of those additions or changes will automatically be picked up by the fraction class. And that's an important concept, and maybe that's where we'll begin, which is if I make a change to the fraction class here, then the fractions that I've created over here, I only created two fractions here, but you could imagine maybe I've created hundreds or thousands. I may have thousands or tens of thousands of lines of code that depend on or make use of this fraction class. So you need to be aware of that when you're doing object-oriented programming. The objects that you create, when you make changes to the objects, that's going to have a ripple effect. The changes you make here are going to affect other parts of your programming that are making use of those objects. So encapsulation, another way to think about encapsulation, or at least another aspect of encapsulation, is that when you make changes to the fraction, it's self-sufficient in that when you make changes to the fraction class, it should not substantially, ideally, it shouldn't affect at all the, what I'm saying is the outside world, which would be outside programs to the fraction class. And that's this second part, this idea of a consistent interface. So the first thing I want to look at with regards to that is I'm actually going to break that interface. I'm, I'm actually going to ruin that model and then we're going to try to repair that. We're going to try to fix it. And that ties into, I have a very hard time thinking about encapsulation without thinking about data hiding because sometimes data hiding is what allows you to do proper encapsulation. Data hiding is when you say the inner workings of an object don't need to be visible to the outside world. And that's not saying all of the workings of the object, but there are certain inner workings we don't necessarily want the outside world to see. So I'm going to go back to what I started with, or at least as of the last tutorial. I've got my fraction class. I've got a numerator. I've got a denominator. I've got the method that determines the size. I've got a method that compares two fractions. And then I have my test fraction class, which essentially is my program. It's just a main method to set a couple of values for numerator and denominator on one fraction, set a couple of values on another fraction. And then it invokes or calls a couple of methods, the size method, the is larger than instance methods. And this works. I can compile this. It's error free. It will run. There's the results. Now I'm going to break it. And I'm going to break it in a rather simple way, which is uh, there's actually, I'm going to break it in a couple of ways. Let's say that I come along later and I decide that num and den are not clear enough. So I'm going to call this, well, this is a numerator. We should be calling it a numerator. This is a denominator. So we should be calling it a denominator. And then as soon, but as soon as I do that, I immediately have an impact on this file. So now I have to find all instances of the word num and I have to change that to numerator and denominator and okay that's not terrible 
but I still had to make those changes. So now I've essentially I've I've changed some naming here. But of course, by doing this, I've now broken my test program because it uses the fields num and den and num and den. So I would have to propagate that change through these files and through any other files that I may have done this, may have used this fraction class. So you want to be careful about any changes you make like that because of this idea of a consistent interface. But that raises the next question, which is, well, why shouldn't I be able to make changes here, though? If I want to, as the author of this class, if I want to make changes to it, shouldn't I be able to make those changes? And if you design it well, you actually can make a lot of changes in the fraction class, and it doesn't have any impact on anything that's downstream. We just have to be careful about how we use it. And I specifically wasn't careful when I started with this. I, I, I was specifically going for easy. So now let's look at careful. The way that you're careful about this is, uh, well, one way at least that I'm going to be focusing on right now is through accessor and mutator methods. So these are instance methods. And they are the methods that are designed to give access to the data fields that you, that you want to give access to, to the outside world. So the first thing we need to do is say, well, okay, I don't want the outside world to have access to numerator and denominator in their raw form. Who knows what some crazy programmer will do with my wonderful fraction class. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to introduce the keyword private on each of these data fields. So now I've locked off numerator and denominator and if I compile again you're going to find even though I restored the names num and den this doesn't work anymore because numerator and denominator are now hidden. This is our first example of actual data hiding. Now the reason I'm doing that is because I'm actually going to create a method uh, so this method is a void method and it's going to be used to set the numerator and it's going to set the numerator to some, to some value and so I'm just going to say this numerator is assigned to whatever value is passed in using set numerator the reason why I can do this, I can't access the numerator field from outside of the class, but I can access it from inside the class. And this method is inside the class. And I'm going to set another mutator set denominator to a certain value. This dot den is equal to a value. And now I've got a way to set these. So I go back and instead of setting f numerator equal to 2, I would actually say f dot set numerator 2. And this one is going to become, I'm just going to rewrite it, f dot set denominator to 3. g, instead in, in this case, it's going to be g.setNumerator to 5 and set denominator to 6. And as is often the case when you make changes to code like this, the logical question is why are you going to this trouble? Isn't this a lot of work? Well, it is because we didn't do good design up front, but if we had got done better design up front, this would be easier. And that's not to say the best design in the world can still result in you having to go and make changes to multiple files. You may make a radical change in your design, you may make a repair, um, and you just have to accept that as a programmer. But in general, I could have set these uh, accessor, or sorry, these are mutator methods. I could have done them right from the outset. So set numerator, set denominator. For consistency, I now will use set numerator and set denominator wherever I want to do that. To make that really explicit, I'm going to make them public because I want that to be my interface to the outside world. And that's, I'm only going to talk in terms of private and public. There are actually other, um, 
not even sure what word to use with these. There are other keywords that describe the levels of access that you're going to give to fields or you're going to give to methods. I am going to focus exclusively on public and private. They satisfy for the, they're the broadest terms and they satisfy uh, what we need for this discussion. So set numerator, set denominator. And you can see that this sets the numerator to a value, sets the denominator to a value. If I compile now, my compilation worked. If I run this, it goes back to working the exact same way that it did. Now, what's the value in this? Well, the value in this is if I now make my change within the class, if I call this numerator and I call this denominator, well, I have to remember that this is numerator. I have to make any changes locally. I have to catch all of those. And that includes these. And I'm still not completely happy with this. That I, I'm, I'm not even happy that I had to change these ones. So we're going to make another change. So these are, what I've done so far, these are called accessor methods. Uh, sorry, mutator. Mutator methods are methods that are used to change private fields in your uh, in your data structure, in your class, or in the object of the class. We're also going to make use of something called accessor methods, because I don't like the fact that I had to go and change these as well. So again, I'm going to back out that change. I like to actually, I want to keep that. But let's bring out all the num and dens. Let's bring them back to the way they were. And now I'm going to talk about the other types. So I'll put that comment back in here. These are mutator methods. And up at the top here, I'm going to add what are known as accessor methods. Now, accessor methods allow the outside world direct access to the numerator and denominator. My test program didn't make use of that, but it might want to know what is a particular numerator, what is a particular denominator. If I want if I want the outside world to be able to do that, I make it public. Now this one's not going to be void. This is going to be int. I'm going to use get numerator, no parameters. And I'm going to return this dot numerator. And then I'm going to create a public int get denominator. And I'm going to return this dot denominator. If I don't want, if for some reason I decide I don't want the public to have access, I can make these private. You would just make sure you have a very good reason as to why you're making them public or private. In most cases, accessor methods, it, it makes sense to actually make them public. Now, because I've created these accessor methods, get numerator and get denominator, I'm going to show you another change that I would probably make here, which is this is going to be get numerator. and get denominator. Now I may be getting a little too heavy into the design here. I, I might be over designing this class but I want to expose you to different concepts. Now in this case because I'm using get numerator and get denominator now if I make a change to if I make a change to this data structure if you use accessor and mutator methods then when you make a change to the data structure, you know that the only places where you have to go and make changes, first of all, you want to make sure that the only place where you have to make changes are within the fraction class. We've covered that. And secondly, if you are very strict about your use of mutator and accessor methods, then you only have to change your mutator and accessor methods to reflect any changes you make to the data structure because everything else is making use of those mutator and accessor methods. So that's that's interesting. That's that's something to think about. Now, something else I want to talk about is and this is part of the idea of encapsulation, a consistent interface to the outside world. One of the things that we typically 
do in mathematics when we're dealing with fractions is we frown upon denominators that are negative. So you can actually start to build a little bit of intelligence, a little bit of, of decision making or a lot of decision making into these programs. So I am, for example, if the user asks me to set the denominator to a value that is negative, I could force that value to be positive and then I could change the numerator to be negative. Now there are all sorts of potential issues that go along with that. For example, what if the user tries to set denominator before they set the numerator? There's nothing, there's nothing that says they might do one in a particular order or another order. And in a, a, an upcoming tutorial I'm going to deal with a question like that, which is, well how do we force the user to create these fractions the way we want them to? Maybe we don't want the user to be able to set numerator and denominator separately. If they're setting a fraction, shouldn't we require that they know the numerator and denominator at the same time? So that's something we're going to be looking at when we look at constructor methods. So I think that I'm going to leave off at this point. I think I've covered the key points that I wanted to, which was the idea of public and private. So you use private to hide. You can use private to hide data fields. You may also have private methods. You can use public to reveal those explicitly. By default, if we don't put anything, which I still have here under double size, the size method, really now that we're talking about public and private, I should make that public. I should make the is larger than public. So the only thing I'm going to have private right now is going to be my two data fields, numerator and denominator. Later on, I may introduce a method or another data field that may be private, but I need to have a good reason for doing that. So I've used data hiding. I've used the private and public keywords to help control what's being hidden and what's being revealed. And I'm using the set and get methods, the accessor and mutator methods. I'm using those to provide some form of encapsulation. It goes hand in hand with data hiding. And by doing the accessor and mutator methods, I'm providing this consistent interface to the outside world. Now I can change this however I want to. And ideally, my test program, because it's using public methods provided by the fraction class, my test program shouldn't require any changes in the future or certainly not many changes in the future unless I do a big redesign. And that's it for this tutorial on encapsulation and data hiding.